a godly man that takes action, our true identity, if we are a Christ follower, is in Him and Him alone. And ultimately, if you're a follower of Jesus, you have the Spirit of God dwelling inside of you, equipped in you to fight. And when you chase after Jesus, when you begin to worship Him and begin to give Him all that you have to give, there's nothing that this world can throw at you that, that you can't look at in the face and say, you know, I'm good with it. Let's get it! From the book, Men of the Word, Solomon's testimony serves as a somber warning and a timely reminder for us today. As he learned the hard way, the more we search for life outside of God, the more we will experience disappointment and emptiness within our hearts. Life lived apart from God is the height of vanity, but life lived in fellowship with Him is the sweetest and most fulfilling experience possible. Ironically, the wisest man who ever lived ended his search at the very place where we should begin ours with the recognition that the pursuit of true happiness is the pursuit of God himself. Amen. Couldn't have said it better myself. Amen. First of all, let's go ahead and say we got uh, we got some birthday boys sitting sitting next to us. We got the birthday bros? We got the birthday bros. Let me tell you, my Dude. fingers have been going, on, going at it on the Instagram. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah. Like yesterday, towards the end of the day, I'm like, I got to post for Mitch. I posted for Mitch and then turned around today, which is Tuesday. We're recording on a Tuesday. is Jarrett Foshi's birthday. Yeah. Jarrett birthday. Foshi, happy birthday. Yeah, birthday. The big 23 Thanks, or... Yeah, flip-flop that. Flip-flop. Okay, yeah. I was going to ask, is, are you past the age where you you don't want to announce how old you are anymore? Or are you past that number? I feel like you oh, just man. don't care at, at any yeah. point. Yeah. I think right now it's a it's a flex for Jarrett. He's got the big arms. He's fit. He's in good shape. You're looking tan, man. Looks good. Yeah. He's tan. Spent the week at the beach, so. You're looking good, Jarrett. Happy birthday. You do too, man. I, Mitch, I, you look good too. I, uh, I think that Murph really did some stuff for you. You know, just doing what I do. <laughs> do you think the ice bath helped? After the fact, yes. During the fact, no. After I, the fact is in like, how long? Because... I feel like maybe the next day guys, it helped. Guys, yeah. <laughs> that day I was feeling fine. Like, we went down to the beach after Murph and was feeling fine. You know, nothing. Now, you know, it felt like you just participated in a workout that morning, you know. It was not easy taking the luggage upstairs to the house and all that, you know. I mean, you know, if you felt it. But then that afternoon I was on my feet all day long. We were on the boat all day. We were in the water all day swimming around playing. And then my whole family, like, 30 Schwabs showed up at our beach house that night. So we had like a big family get together. We were cooking the whole time. We were talking, playing. Of course, Piper's running around in the mud and water and out stuff there at the beach. And about five o'clock, I hit that wall. And I said, yep, I'm, I'm wore out. I'm tired. You know, I think that was good for you, though, because the lactic acid yep. was, yep. was kind of working out. Yep. I really miss that lady from the cruise ship there that worked my lactic acid out of me, though. I needed her again. My, mas- my masseuse. Oh. I guess I should have. I guess I should oh, have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Sorry. Good save. Good save. Mitch, how did you feel after? Uh, I felt I felt okay. I did the opposite. I went and laid down. Yeah. Which probably wasn't the best thing for me to do, but um, I, I yeah, we had. Cass and the girls and they came over, and they tried to get me to play with them. And dude, I was, I, I wasn't having it. Yeah. Was and, to, so and to preface anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, Mitch and Cole did the Murph. It's recorded. It's on YouTube. Go check it out. Uh, so we're asking them how they felt after yeah. feel a mile f- run, a hundred pull ups, two hundred push ups, three hundred air squats, and a mile run. You're talking about me though. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. I'm a very <laughs> disappointed myself. I really am. I, I, after the fact, when well, you, all said and done. I should have. I should have. You know, in the video, I said he was going to do the entire reps of the. Of See, the actual, I missed that part. Yeah. I thought I, I was missed. Doing I half. missed where you were doing uh, half of the reps. I thought you were you just were doing like, the Dude, first timer, thirty six minutes. Well, he told cow. he came up and said did twelve. Yeah. All right, you got eight more. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I then, thought I was supposed to see the text that I read from a few days prior, where it said Ori recommends you do eight hundred meters. 50 pull-ups and that's right yeah i just i didn't when it's all said and done i I should the running i probably wouldn't have been great at i probably wouldn't have been able to do but i I should have done the full circuit of the actual workout and i'm very disappointed myself next year i'm doing the whole thing 
You, you heard it here first. All right. That'd be great. Well, I should have. Go. I left a lot out there, and I'm very disappointed in myself. Well, me and Jarrett did it, too, after they got done. Uh, positive peer pressure, yeah. I would say. Mentally just was not there, ready to go. Um, <laughs> I know y'all were, like, doing the other stuff before that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we, I maxed out my power clean. I know. I attempted to max <laughs> out my not power clean. Not the cleans. best idea. Not the best idea. <laughs> I attempted to max out my power clean, and I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do some jump ropes and stuff. And then right when Mitch went to go on his run, Jarrett came up and said, hey, you just want to do the workout? So well, I mean, we're here, so might as well. And it was a grind. It was. Yeah. I went and laid on the bed, and I told Rachel, don't disturb me. I'm not moving the rest <laughs> of the day. <laughs> Until we go to Thomasville, T-ville this afternoon, I'm just going to lay right here. I will say you are probably wiser that you did not do it yesterday. Do you know how many people? There was a ton of people there. Gym. Yeah. And the weather Saturday was phenomenal Oh yeah. versus mm -hmm. Monday. Yeah, it was a little warm for those people running their second mile. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm proud of all three of you boys and, and the effort that you put forth. Very proud. Y'all did a fine job. I, honestly, I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, yeah we all I, grinded. I'm disappointed in myself. I, I really it, it's am. good, though, that you're disappointed. That means you care. That's very true. So, uh, Wise words. So then what do we got? When is Labor Day? Is that three months from September now? September 5th-ish. Yeah. We're yeah, doing Murph on Labor months. Day? No, we're doing yeah. something. It's not the Cabal yeah. workout. We're not doing that. <laughs> if we did the Cabal... You wouldn't be K-ball? We could do K-ball. Me and, me and A.B. could team up again. and I can, Yeah, I'll Cole. team up with Cole. I'll team up with Cole, baby. Uh, I don't know. I saw what time y'all did the Murfin, and, and I don't know. <laughs> no. It was miserable. See, Ball, I didn't Ball's, know what it was. a different story. beast. Yeah. Cabal's totally different. Mitch, I'm proud of you and the time you put forth. I thought that was like an average time. It would take people an hour to do Murph. And then I see these two just barrel race through this bad boy. So... <laughs> So I get done with the Murph though, and this Another is funny. Backhand of compliment. No, no, no. I didn't mean to. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm good. proud of you. No, no, I, I knew it was coming too. I it thought it was a good time, it. but but you suck. Basically. No, no. I knew I shouldn't. I, I'm sorry. Don't take it that way. I don't. I'm just I love kidding. you, Mitchell. I love you too, buddy. We uh, I get to the so my brother-in-law Ryan. He he did. He was a former Marine, so they would do the workout like Free once a year in, in 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 military, I guess. But they had to do it with the weighted vest, and they had they had to do the full the, one hundred the real workout, yeah. what he calls it. Yeah. And so I get done, and, and I I show up to the beach house Saturday. He goes, "Hey man, how'd you do today?" I said, "Dude, I rocked that workout. I did it in thirty six minutes." He said, "No, you didn't." I said, "You can ask Mitch, Jarrett, and Austin. I did that workout in thirty six minutes. I swear, I promise you." He says, "No, you didn't, Cole." He said, "That's that's." That's a, a record's like 34 minutes. He said, there's no way you did that workout in 34, 36 minutes. Said, Just tell you what I did it in. I did half the workout in 36 <laughs> minutes, but yeah. Yeah, I know that the workout is like, I think that's how it's structured is supposed to be. But yeah. when the CrossFit Games athletes are actually splitting yeah. it up, then yeah. I, I think that, that gives us a, a good excuse to do it. Um, our coach did it, did the 100, 200, 300 straight. Ori, oh, yeah. and he did it in 51 minutes. Yep. Wow. And he is on levels beyond yeah. us fitter. Yeah. Did y'all see uh, Mark Zuckerberg did it? <laughs> wow. That's about one of the last people I, I would know. ever imagine. And he did it in like 40-something minutes. Dang. With a vest. Let me tell you, I, I'm, I know this for a fact. <laughs> watch the push-ups. Yeah. Watch the pull-ups. Yeah. They they're like he did a couple they're cold all they're oh yeah they're all gonna be half stuff mm -hmm. like breaking elbows for the push ups mm -hmm. that's what Cole did mm -hmm. but I'm no probably, it was good I'm, to call it was good. Out I'm here, glad but. you said it not me because my dad was watching the video and he was like those don't even count <laughs> <laughs> he's barely even going down listen listen I watched the film after the fact and I thought in the video I just thought doing them I'm like, these, are, these are full pull ups I got long arms I thought I was doing a full pull up push up then you watch the film on yourself and you realize yeah, that's rough same, same not real pull up push ups yeah, that's rough. Disappointed in myself, but um, but yeah, it was good. It was a good weekend, and then you know, obviously, Mitch's birthday was celebrated the 29th. Yep. Uh, Mitch is now. I'm not gonna. You don't have to tell your age, but he is. He is technically, um, well, like the prime of your life is supposed to be one more year older than you are. Mm, interesting. Yeehaw. That is that is that's what they say is the peak prime. Like if you are. But I also Male athlete. Yeah, that's yeah. what they say. Yeah. Interesting. So Murph next year, boys. Sub <laughs> thirty. Get Sub thirty-seven 30. <laughs> minute flat. And then Jared's birthday today. So you, I I'm guess you. Past my prime. 
Yeah, well, no, well, I don't you know, have Jared. one more year, and then you'll be. You have one more year, and you'll be thirty-three. That's like the peak of a life. I thought was thirty-three. I thought it was twenty-eight. Well, that's, maybe for peak performance, but peak mentally, I thought was thirty-three. Well, maybe that was, that was the year Jesus. Yeah, died. Jesus, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You got one more year until you. you yeah, know. One more year. Yeah. Live it up. <laughs> Thanks. It's <laughs> yeah. really encouraging. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you could call this the birthday special. Yeah. 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 It was also it was also my uh, me and Rachel's two year anniversary yeah. yesterday. Hey, tell me about that anniversary. Well, we went into we went to we went up north, as you would say. Mm. And we visited a restaurant called Liam's. Not an ad, but would love for a sponsor. Cool. Leon Liam's was incredible. Had the sixty day dry age steak. So here's my take on a dry age steak. Sometimes you can really taste like the moldiness. I've been able to taste a little bit of like old, oldness to a dry aged steak. To be before. honest, I've, I, have, I guess I just haven't had enough dry aged steak to tell you that I agree with you because I don't. I, I've never seen it, but I haven't had enough. I think you've had more than I have. Well, this one was fantastic. Hmm. So there's, I know there's different ways to cook them. Um, the one I've had before was, I think it was a little bit older than sixty days, and I think that's probably why I didn't. It didn't sit well with my stomach. Uh, this one was great, though. I really enjoyed it. Came out on a wooden chopping board, cutting board. Um, had a little salt in the top left corner. Had a little dab of um, garlic mashed potatoes in the top right corner. Mm. And um, I only ate half of my dab of garlic mashed potatoes because Rachel ate the other half. And when I say it was a dollop, it was a dollop. <laughs> the steak was the star of the show. Oh, yeah. one hundred. It was 18 ounces. It was a ribeye. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Did, did it require a knife? Uh, yeah, it did. Now, once you got to like the middle, it was pretty tender. Mm, mm. But it was it was really good. I, I enjoyed it. It was, I mean, tasted really good, tasted great. Walked around Thomasville for a split second, tried to go to the uh, coffee shop. It was closed. Um, grassroots. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we just walked did back. Did you go to the Christian bookstore? No, we didn't. It's on the whole other end, isn't it? Yeah, well, I asked, I said, Rachel, you want to walk around a little bit? Like, it was perfect because it was like six, it was seven o'clock. There was nobody downtown Thomasville. I said, it's a perfect time to walk around. And she said, well, let's just go home and we'll get, so we, we bought the Dr. Pepper ice cream float, Bluebell. Mm. Very good. Really? So she was really looking forward to that. Mm. So we went home and watched a movie. I can't remember what movie we watched. I saw I saw the advertisement for the Dr Pepper Blue Bill. Yeah, I figured you would you would probably enjoy. It was pretty good. I I enjoyed it. Maybe he's a Dr Pepper man. I am a little cherry, a little cherry action in there. I saw somebody put. I don't know y'all y'all would know who this skit guy is. It's uh, some dude from the south. I'm sure y'all have seen him before. He puts uh, Dr Pepper float ice cream in a Dr Pepper. Oh yeah, they tried that double Dr Pepper float. Rachel wow. tried it. I don't know. It was a little too much for me. I was gonna say I don't know how I feel about that, but. Too much Dr. Pepper. Yeah. So, anyways, um, well, Cole, since it's the birthday special, birthday special. Are you Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking what you're thinking. All right, let's let's break it out. I've got a little birthday gift for you two boys. I'll be right back. We'll be right back. Um, we'll be right back. Stay tuned because you're going to want to see what Cole brings back to the boys. Stay tuned. We have no idea. And we're back, and Cole is back, and whoever is looking forward to seeing what the boys are going to have, Cole has this big old Yeti cooler, Yeti sponsor us, and inside is a surprise for the birthday boys. Cole, would you like to take this Sorry, take this I'm a little out away? of breath. I had to carry this cooler into the room. Uh, <laughs> well, guys, I got y'all a cooler full of ice, all our favorite utensils right here. Oh, yeah. And this is the star of the show right here. Cole's, Cole's literally dig what? Oh yeah! Wow. What is that? So Cole, Cole to right the right viewers, there. to who can't, to the people who can't see, Cole just pulled out a tub of wear of what looks to be fresh ice cream. cream churned cake batter ice cream. Mm. Cold Stone's recipe. Wow! Cake batter ice cream doesn't get much better. But no. from the home of who? From the home of Cole Schwab. Freshly churned last night. Wow! Freshly wow. churned. I wanted I wanted to churn it today in studio. So we could have <laughs> from the machine itself, like Jarrett's always yeah, straight out from Cold Stone. <clears throat> yeah. So for those of you who don't know the backstory here, Jarrett used to be a former employee of Cold Stone. He even brought the 
And is, is that just brown? I mean, Jared and I, we used to be nemesis because he stole <laughs> yeah. my friends. He stole my friends. I mean, and, I think I was your nemesis, but I, you weren't okay. mine. Okay. I, mean, I never, I never went that far. Remember? No, 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 no. He's the bigger person here. Yeah, you're right. Well, well I just had no reason. Also, he was also like 31 at the time, so he's more mature. <laughs> I have matured. <laughs> so, Jared and I one day are casually talking, and I'm still kind of on edge. I'm like, I don't know about this guy. He stole my friends. Still filling it out. Yeah. And then all of a sudden. He says, you know, I used to work at Cold Stone. I said, what's your go-to flavor? His ears started perking up. And we said, three, two, one. We're going to say it at the same time. Three, two, one. Cake batter ice cream. Yep. We just become best friends. And what's your topping on the cake batter ice cream? We said, three, two, one. We said, chocolate brownies. (laughs) We looked at each other. We said, did we just become best friends? He said, yep. (laughs) And from that day, we became car buddies. We did. That was our true bonding moment. We did. So I've told this man for a while I'm going to duplicate the cake batter ice cream. And I... We're gonna be the judge of it today. Yeah, I think it's time. So, I think it's time to break it out. Let how him, is let this gonna work? Brought some Oreos. So I've, I've got, I've got, I don't, I forgot spoons. That's the only thing I forgot. Uh, well, I think we have some. <laughs> Just re- re- I brought plates. Okay. I, need, I was gonna say you have plates. Okay, I brought plates. Right, I'll right. grab spoons. So here in the plates, they say "Happy Birthday." Sorry for the pink, but that's all we had at the house. <laughs> pink for those looking at home. Um, cups. Would cups cups would be better than plates, right? Yeah, I suppose they just don't say "Happy Birthday" on the cups, but that's fine. No, I think, no. I, think I think we should do the plate so they can see. Yep. Okay. I also brought a lighter. Oh, do I get one too, or is it just the birthday boys? Oh, everybody's getting cake. Wow! I was just I was excited to see the no, reaction. No, 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 no. I was, to be honest, a little I three how candles. Are you, how are you gonna light it? I brought a lighter. <laughs> no, I'm saying like, what are you gonna stick it in? In the in the cake. I appreciate the sentiment. So I brought three really? candles, two blue, one pink. The two blues are for the birthday boy. The pink is for the, the anniversary that we're celebrating today as well. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Golly. Man. Pink is love. Yeah, I guess you're right. I also didn't have any red, so that's why. Oh, well, that's okay. All right. Put enough. my mic down. I thought it was silent. Um, I'm going to divvy I thought, I thought the pink was going to go to Jarrett because of the because of the girl that he met. That's be. all I've ever known. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if he wants pink, we can give him pink. You know... It, for those this, who can't this hear is, Cole, this is this is Cole Schwab. Yeah, like, this is like this is an embodiment of who Cole Schwab is. This is why everyone needs <laughs> a Cole Schwab in their life. I mean, you can, you, look at that cream. Look at that, just flopping around. <laughs> it kind of looks like sour cream. Is that like a spoon? They're, they're right yeah, here. We have them right here. We just we, we have them right scooping here. it for now. We're gonna start with the yeah, scoop. yeah. Start with the scoop. Here, just, I'll just pass. Yeah, it just pass them down. That's a good idea. <laughs> That's a good scoop. The smell taste. The smell is fantastic already. I gotta put the mic up close to it. All right. Yep. All right. Now, who wants brownie toppings? Well, I guess we all have to have brownie toppings. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want to try it just plain, but but you can put brownie topping. I can. I can. Where's the spoons? They're right here in this cup. So Cole Schwab cake batter ice cream is on sale now. So message us on Good With It if you would like to buy some. Okay. <laughs> He's giving you one spoon. He took both of them. We're gonna divvy up these. Uh, Cole is opening bits. opening the brownie bits now. And is and is night. talking as if we could actually hear him. I'm gonna sprinkle these brownie bits. Ah yes. We'll just put them on the side yeah, I appreciate it. Yep. Just, just put them on the side. Don't worry. I wash my hands a second. Wow. Awesome. You're the man. What a guy. I've never Where seen a brownies Cole from. Swap is this move? Publix? Publix brownies? Green-wise. I like it. Publix brownies? <laughs> Publix brownies? Publix brownies. Thank you. Thank you for the. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cole, are you going to sing us happy birthday? Yeah, I am. Okay. Can you do it in the mic? Of course. <laughs> wow. I feel so Man. special. It's not even my birthday. Rachel was here to appreciate the anniversary. Yeah, Rachel would love this. She would. I feel like this I This is am. right up her alley. It is. All right, All right ready? Yep. We're ready. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Join in, everybody. Happy birthday and anniversary. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. All right. The Man. candle has been blown out. Now it's time for the true test. Time for the true test. I'm going, I'm going the ice cream part first. I'm going to get a little brownie and then scoop the ice cream. Oh, my cream. goodness. That is phenomenal. Yeah, we're going to go straight ice cream. and then. Yeah, that's phenomenal. It's good. It tastes just like cake batter. Yeah, I'm telling you. Cole, this is pretty dang close. 
What's it missing then? I don't know. <laughs> That's the first thing he says. Pretty close. Like if, the, if, with this, it back if this isn't it, it's pretty dang close. Jarrett with a backhanded compliment, Cole. I've never been a big fan of cake batter ice cream. I am now. See, Cold Stone. Cold Stone has the best. There's no doubt about it. I think nowhere honestly, else can I can't replicate. Remember it. The last time I had Cold Stone, I think the only thing you're missing is a Cold Stone. Is a Cold Stone. See, Scoop it up I in. I saw one. Mix on it all in. Amazon the other day, and I told Lindsay. She said, "Why do you need that? That would be awesome." I said, "Bro, it, it comes with the two little flat spoons." I bet marble slabs is. I'm not gonna lie. I could just eat those brownies too. It's blasphemous. I was gonna say nobody blasphemous. I appreciate you saying something. Did you hear what I said? Is it Cole? I said I bet marble slabs is pretty good. Isn't marble slab their only like name to fame? Is it's just cold stone, but it's like a marble slab. I think so. On a marble slab too. Oh well, they just copied them. Yeah. Tell you what I heard. This is phenomenal. Tell you what I heard the other day. Cold stone. Created cake batter ice cream. They trademarked the name cake batter ice cream. Mm. So now anywhere else you go, it's just called birthday cake ice cream. Oh. Mm. That's interesting how you can how you can trademark that. I feel like that's a pretty well, general name. They came up with the recipe. I don't know. This is phenomenal. AB's already done. I am. Well, I didn't want to have the viewers hear my smacking. I know. I'm trying to like. Yeah. So as the as the fellas are. Deep into the ice cream. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rate it. Mm. Let's, hear your, let's hear your rating. Out of 10? Yeah. Cake batter alone. Now, I will say that the brownies kind of messed my taste buds up because the brownies were super sweet. But first bite, I mean, I was thinking a solid 8.7, eight, 8.8. Eight. I'm proud of that 8.7. Yeah. I'll take that 8.7. But you know, I think you my my uh I have a little bit different my texture of the ice cream. I kind of like that. Um and it's kind of tough to replicate cuz it was in a cooler. I like that crisp kind of um like kind of at the cruise. Mm -hmm. Um you know that that kind of it's not necessarily soft serve. You need to try it fresh out of the creamer. That's what when I it's need. Fresh to do, yeah. out of that creamer. It'll make your eyes roll in the back of your head. Okay. That's, that phenomenal. would be my only critique, but other than the taste was fantastic. Honestly, my critique was something that you can't control. So I think that's a pretty good. We'll review. We'll renew the, the vote then. Yeah, that was Next great. Next time when I get you one out of the creamer. Yeah, that was good. I'm excited to hear. Uh, let's go, Mitch. Yeah, I'll go second because you need to save yours. For I'm this. waiting for Jar Jarrett's is the one that's just. Yeah. I, on, the, on the total opposite of what AB just said, I like like a half melted mm -hmm. ice cream. So I love that. Good. Texture wise. Um, also love soft serve. I mean, who doesn't? But if I had to, if I have to pick it, I like it how it is how it is now. It's perfect. Um, I was thinking like like eight nine, eight nine, nine zero or nine one. I'm proud that, of that. that three, That's a good score that range. So you did phenomenal. Well done. Thank you. Well done. I Thanks. might be regretting that later when I have to do burpees, but mm. well done. Because <laughs> mm. I really want more. <laughs> yeah. It's good. See, I got a whole cart. I know, and it's very tempting. It's delicious. You'll partake later on. We'll get you one off camera. We'll see. All right. Now the time we All right, cake wait. batter boy. So if cake batter straight out of the creamery inside of Cold Stone is a 10. Mm. If that's the bar, mm. walking into Cold Stone, getting it out of the box is an 8.8. .8. I would say that that is an 8.6. I'm, I'm proud of that. Okay. I'm proud of that. Oh. And I think... If if you could have if we had the resources to be able to sure. have a slab mix it all together throw it in a waffle cone mm. I mean that's it's probably nine point four wow. Wow. wow wow holy cow wow. I think it's, also it's there's good. there's a lot of high praise in this because not just everybody makes ice cream no and I honestly like I've ne uh, the only homemade ice cream I've had is like rock salt churn it's very gritty and that's not the same thing right? a lot yeah. of home a lot of homemade ice cream is very gritty yeah and like that's oh, did good you like. Say <laughs> it, he's, a homemade ice cream is witty witty gwitty. <laughs> but now that's like the only homemade ice cream I've had, uh, and outside of this, and this is like totally different. This mm -hmm. tastes like this tastes store bought in in like the most complimentary way. If I'm I telling sense. you, shout out Cuisinart Creamery thing. All right, I don't know the name of Cuisinart <laughs> Creamery thing. It's incredible. I'm you freeze the bowl, and then you pour the while and the bowl's frozen, and it starts spinning. 
Then you pour the ingredients in. It has a little spinner in the middle. It makes phenomenal cream. I'm proud of that thing. It's That's delicious. Good. It was great. How long did how long does it take? Oh, dude, I, I was done with that whole thing from creating the mixture to frozen ice cream. Thirty minutes. Wow. wow. Yeah. Hey, could you make sherbet? Yeah. I want to try some. I made sherbet. sherbet. I want to try no, some lemon I made or sorbet. Sherbet. Excuse mm. me. I blended up sorbets a bunch of strawberries. Is, with what's a the sugar? That sorbet, sorbet I think is straight fruit. Yeah. Sherbet right. is cream and fruit. Is that what you got? Yep, that's her. Mm. But it's I got the, an ice cream maker machine. I got the Magnolia Collect Edition though. It has electric buttons on it. That's I think just a little nozzle. Ooh, nice. Well, well done. I'm not a, incredible. I'm not a big sweets guy, but I could eat that every day. Yeah, that was that was very very good. It's amazing. Um, Cole is gonna sell his ice cream. <laughs> so if you would like to buy some, just send a special request. Honestly, like, I'm sure Cole up, would, you could sell that. I'm, I'm sure Cole could could uh, hit you up with some. Uh, but that being said, that's our birthday special. But we're going to come right back, and we're going to discuss our top four best American movies slash TV shows. American. And then we're going to go into our Give With It segment. So make sure you stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to another Good With It segment. Um, we just got to partake in some amazing ice cream um, and just felt like America. And this last weekend, we celebrated um, and remembered and honored uh, all of those men and women who have given their lives so that we can do something as silly as gather and do a podcast and eat ice cream and celebrate together, um, along with many other things. And so, um, in all seriousness, and thank you um, for those families that have uh, sur- uh, surrendered and um, have sacrificed and have um, fought overseas and have um, given their lives to um, afford us the freedoms that we have today. Uh, we don't take that lightly. And we had a great weekend of celebrating um, and remembering those that have done that. And we want to today <clears throat> speak to our top four movies slash TV shows that in our minds embody America. Um, so that can be whatever, whatever comes to your mind. When you think of America and you think of TV shows or movies, um, top four. So, I can kick us off. I want to say right out of the gate here because I'm pretty sure you're gonna y'all all have one thing in common that I'm not gonna have, and that is Band of Brothers. And I felt like because I have not finished the show, uh, I've only really I've only watched like a season and a half of it, so I didn't feel like it was right to put it on there because I haven't season. You mean an episode and a half? I mean an episode and a half. Sorry. Um, I didn't feel like it was right to to put that on my on my list, but I'm sure if I'd watched it all the way through, it would it would be on here. I had a really hard time doing like which which position these are going to be in. We'll just say Mount Rushmore then. Yeah, just, it, it is kind of Mount Rushmore. Four, one, two, three, four. Just be top four. I, I'll go how how I think they are in my mind. I went all movies. Um, I couldn't really think of. Very many TV shows. When I thought of America, I didn't really think of TV shows. I thought of movies. So, number four, I went with Pearl Harbor. Um, Pearl Harbor is is one of the first, I think, like war movies that I remember watching as a kid. Um, and it's just a great movie. And I remember it being... The one thing I remember about, about it is be, it being so long. And we don't have this issue anymore, but I remember it being two DVDs. That you had to you had to stick in the one DVD about halfway through. You had to stick in the other one so that you could finish the movie. Um, but yeah, just a great a great movie, a great reenactment of that um, moment. And one of the moments that I remember that just sticks in my mind is the moment where um, the Japanese general says, "We've awakened." I, I believe we've just awakened a giant. Mm. And it's like, man, that doesn't say America. Um, Number three, I went with Top Gun. Mm. Just a just America movie. Um, and now that there's a second one, I'm in both of them. Just just one of the best movies ever made. And then I don't know. Just they just really displays. unified the country too. 
Yeah, like, I agree. I feel like we all kind of wrapped around a movie. That's, yeah, it's true. In a time that we needed it. Yeah. Yep. Top Gun. Um, number three. This was the first rated R movie that I was ever allowed to see. And I don't even know if I was allowed to see it. I think they just, my parents were watching it and they were like, uh, it is what it is. The Patriot. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's mm. a good one. Mel Gibson. I mean, in his prime. It was, man, that's one of the best movies. That's that's probably a, that might be a top four movie for me just in general. Yeah. Um, it's one, it's one of the greatest. But The Patriot. And then number one, I, I just got to go. I don't know which one. So I'm just going to encompass all of them together if I can do that. I'm going with Rocky. Mm, man, mm. that is so mm. true. I think, I think Rocky's, it's got to be, it's got to be on the list. If not, number one. And for me, it's it's at the top of the list. So I'm Golly. going, I'm going with Rocky. Jared, I think you took my entire list. Did I really? Like I had all four. Really? I on the, yeah. I, I had a, I had. Like that's three or four great. honorable no mentions. I'm not mean sure which one's going to be my honorable mention. We'll we'll get get there when we get there. But I was going to say Rocky Four of all the Rocky movies. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, all is probably the most, the most patriotic. Yeah. yeah, they're all great though. Well, cool. Good, yeah. Is is there is your list identical? No, I, I, I'll change a few up then. Okay, do you want to go next, I, or do I, you I need can't a minute? Change up Top Gun though. Top Gun's going to be on there. Top Gun. Patriot, I, I'm not going to take that one. Well, no. No, Cole. You stick to your guns. Well, I had... I had to, hey, hey, hey. So hey. I had six on here, and I had hey, a couple well, we need four. So I'm going to narrow it down. Number three, then I'm going to say Forrest Gump. Just because it's not, you know, it just it's an embodiment of an American, and it goes through so much American history in one very long movie. Um, it is a long movie. But I just, I think... And also, I don't think I've ever met somebody that didn't like Forrest Gump. That's true, yeah. Look, I think everybody likes that movie in general. Um, now, these two right here, these are these four are also is probably one of my top four movies of all time. So you got Top Gun and then um, Forrest Gump. And then I'm going to go with this one. I had Patriot on there. I'm going to leave Patriot off. But just, just because you put it there, Jared. But you know what? I love Patriot. I agree with you on that one. Lone Survivor, though, mm. is... Such an incredible movie. It's not a movie you can watch often. It's not a movie that I that I want to watch over and over again. But it's just a movie that when you do watch it, it it, it just it's so humbling and incredible. I remember watching that movie in theaters, and it brought me to tears in theaters. I'll never forget that. Not many things bring me to tears. It was very gripping. Um, and then the last movie on my list. Go ahead. Miracle. Yeah. I knew somebody would say that one. That's, That's a, a good one. That's a good one. I love that movie. Matter of fact, in eighth grade, I don't remember this AB, but I did a history project, and my history project was on the movie Miracle, <laughs> The Miracle on Ice. It's a good movie. That's Great good speech. One. Incredible yeah. speech. Yeah, incredible speech. That's good. I'll go next, um, if that's okay with you, Mitch. Please. Please. <laughs> Buddy, I'm searching for answers over so, here. So I actually have three on here, two on here really, that haven't been mentioned yet. Okay. Um, three that have... Not been mentioned, but one technically is. I think y'all know what that is. Number four, me Forrest Gump. Hey, yep. Forrest Dude. Gump. It just embodies what it literally goes through the entire history of like the eighties of nineties of America. Like, well, I guess seventies too with the Vietnam 60s, War. Seventies, eighties, nineties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they literally the entire the entire American history in the mid ninety in mid nineteen hundreds. Yep. That's Forrest Gump. So give me Forrest Gump at number four. Here's one that I that I put as my number three, and I will stick to my guns on this one. And it is probably my one of my favorite sports movies of all times. Give me Remember the Titans. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Give me Remember the Titans. I mean, you talk about the war between racial diversity and how one team was able to put aside any type of, of racial and skin color to come together. That's what to me. That's that's America, and ultimately, Amen. that's the gospel, Amen. bringing different races together. So, how about that stretch? Number two, give me Hacksaw Ridge. Good one. Okay. Good one. Dear Lord, let me get one more. <laughs> you know, I gotta be honest. I've actually never seen that movie. Oh movie. Really? man, uh -huh. it'll bring you to tears. It really will. Mm. It's a World War II. I'm a big World War II snob. Love it. 
Um, Hacksaw Ridge number two. And as you could probably may have guessed, I'm the one that came up with the uh, top four movies slash TV shows for this one reason, because nothing tops Band of Brothers. There is not... There is not, if Band of Brothers was a movie, it would be my number one favorite movie of all time. I've watched Band of Brothers through and through three times, and every single time, it's the best TV show I've ever seen. I think they play it on the History Channel every Memorial Day weekend. AMC, baby. Yeah, that's probably AMC? true. Because but you know what? When you have Max, no longer HBO Max. That's right. Max. Yeah, yeah, hey. You can watch it. Max. Yep. So give me Band of Brothers, Easy Company, Max. Uh, Major... Dick Winters is one of the greatest American heroes of all time. That's my list. That's my top four. And yes, I'm putting Banner Brothers as number one. No qualms. I like it. Oh boy. All right. All I right, have Mitch. to. I, while y'all were talking, I was literally googling certain movies because I'm drawing a blank. There's too many options. Thankfully, y'all left one out there that I figured y'all were going to leave on purpose for me to have, but I'll save that one for my number one. Yeah, my number um, one. It's like Captain <laughs> Crunch for me. It's, it's Captain <laughs> Crunch. Captain Crunch, Jersey Mike's in this movie right here. <laughs> Anything else? Or reliable? We're waiting. Uh, <laughs> my number four, uh, we'll go with uh, Friday Night Lights. Oh, yeah. The movie or the... The movie. Okay. Um, honestly, I was thinking Remember the Titans. But when you want remember the Titans, I'd, I'd change it up. We'll do Friday Night Lights at four. Um, three, I'm going to go with, I don't know if, if y'all have seen this, but uh, Letters from Iwo Jima or Flags of Our Fathers. That's it's a two-part movie man, series. I totally forgot about that. Mm, yes. Very good about the Pacific, the World War II and the Pacific. Very good movies. Flags of Our Fathers. Um, great read. Yeah. Read it. Uh, number two, I'm going to have to do Band of Brothers because why can't you do Band of Brothers? It's, it's incredible. And then my number one, like Captain Crunch, like Jersey Mike's, Saving Private Ryan. It's a great movie. On a platter. Yeah, I mean, it's basically Band of Brothers in some way in movie form because it's directed by the same person. Um, and with Tom Hanks, in. it's like the first movie that they've, or maybe it's not the first movie. To me, it's the most realistic movie of what D Day was mm -hmm. was about. Yeah, one of the most realistic ones. So. Yeah, that's mine. I know I'd, I'm not too good at these whole top four things, but uh, I, don't think I was struggling good. for answers. That was answers. a good list, Mitch. So, Solid list. Appreciate Very it. good list. We should have the people start voting for who has the best top four. That would be interesting. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Maybe next. Maybe, maybe we'll start that soon. You know, I think when I when you were you mentioned Friday Night Lights, phenomenal uh, album, by the way. Oh. The little theme songs that they have oh, yeah. in that show. But I was thinking of the TV show. I think when we were doing the list, that was the only TV show that kept popping in my head. Yeah. Do you know what TV show popped in my head? American Dad. And I don't know why. <laughs> Modern Family. Well, probably not the best, yeah. It's an embodiment of America. The only, the only TV show that popped in my head I was like, Parks and Rec. I have no idea yeah, why. Parks and mm -hmm. Rec popped in my I head. I thought about Parks like, and what's Rec. What's a patriotic yeah. TV show? Yeah, I don't know. So what are, what are some honorable mentions? Because there's still a couple out there that I there thought is. of. That nobody's mentioned yet. I'll do one, and I don't know if it's just because of the actor that played in it. 12 Strong was on my list. I thought of that movie. 12 Strong mm -hmm. is the movie about... At, a lot of times we choose movies that are like in the World War II era, like in that kind of like old history eras. To me, 12 Strong is a great movie that's right after... It was post 9-11. It's when the first soldiers went over there. Yeah, the, the um, first men into Afghanistan. Yeah, 12 Strong was a great movie. That was that's on my That's my honorable mention. I'm sticking to it. Surprised nobody uh said uh, Apollo. Apollo's a good one. Yeah, Apollo thirteen. Yep. Yeah, I do like that movie. Nobody said Captain America. Yeah, I figured that, that was that was one. That was one of mine. Eh, I don't know. It's kind of hard not to do not like. It's hard to put a Marvel movie in as an American movie. It's not like super realistic. Yeah. 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 All of the movies that we've chosen have been realistic. But it's Captain America. That's I mean it's yeah. I mean that's yeah. The reason. Have y'all seen a uh, Glory? The Civil War movie. I haven't not. Uh -huh. It's a good movie. Denzel Washington. It's about like the first uh, African American regiment in the Union Army mm. fighting in the Civil War. It's a good one. One that I thought, and I thought maybe AB would mention it. Um, Sandlot. I oh, thought about yeah. it. I thought. I didn't even It's really, yeah. it's really yeah. the moment. It's the Fourth of July. Oh, yeah, the Fourth when of they July go out fireworks. and they play under the fireworks, yep. and it's sure. like that's one of the all, most best scenes like in a mm -hmm. sports movie. And then they do the tobacco. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Then they, they get sick. And, yeah. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I thought about the Sandlot. I think Sandlot will be my honorable mention. That's a good one. Um, you already mentioned. Uh, did I? 
I thought you said I I'm said surprised. two. I said Apollo or Glory. Okay. Go. Man, y'all are saying them. I was gonna say I was thinking twelve strong earlier when I was going on my list, so that's gonna be on an honorable mention. Hmm. That one's tough. Black Hawk Down. I can't Black watch. Hawk it's Hawk hard Hawk to watch that movie yeah, though for that's me. A hard, that's a hard. Yeah, that's an all star cast in that movie too. It is. Hmm. Um, you can do uh, um, what's the sniper movie? Oh, oh just shooter. Oh, Not yeah. Shooter. American Sniper. American Sniper. <laughs> shooter? Shooter's a well, good movie. I was, that I was shooter shooter that. technically is talking about government corruption. Yeah, right? yeah. So, thinking, I mean, even the whole time, that, I was thinking of uh, yeah. when I was about to say the movie Shooter, and then when you said, what's the movie, the guy with the, <laughs> the sniper? Shooter's a good movie, though. I thought that we were on the same page, but you're right, American Sniper is actually very much... Uh, so. Well, there you go. Well, there you have it. So now... Um, I feel like we've been we've been... Holding hands this whole episode. Yeah, it has. And maybe I'm going to split us up. We'll see. <clears throat> this has nothing to do with America, by the way. So, um, and so I'm going to put it out there. I think this is one of those kind of hey dude situations. Okay? This might be a hey dude situation. Mm. So, um, here it is. The end, okay, the end of a loaf of bread, the end piece of a loaf, loaf of bread is an underrated piece of bread. <laughs> Because everybody throws it away. Listen, I'm not trying to flex on you boys, but I've never had to eat the butt of the bread. <laughs> I've just never been in a dire circumstance. Tell us you're rich without telling us you're rich. <laughs> uh, I've honestly, I've never had it. I really don't think it's... I'm sorry. No, it's... So I'm, therefore, I'm going to say I'm not good with it. Okay. Just because I've never had it. Way to be non-ignorant. By saying you've never had it, so you have no opinion. This part where I go. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. I don't. I don't know how I feel about it. I've had it. I've don't really love it, but say it again. Say what. Say exactly. It's what you underrated. Say. It's underrated. Like okay, when you when you get your loaf of bread, you throw it away, or would you eat it? I save it. I save it just in case. I, it's a last like like it's like a uh, it's like a pinch runner if I right. need him. He's there. Do I often call on him? No. But I will if I need to. Okay. So, uh, so I guess I, I'm I'm good with it. I guess. Okay. No, no, no. That Call. piece is the sacrificial lamb. I save that piece so the piece inside of it doesn't get dried out from being exposed to yeah, air. Yeah. See, I do both though. So therefore, it's really the catalyst of the loaf of bread. Really, it it's the way. most important piece of the integrity <laughs> of the loaf. Mm-hmm. So I guess that should be my question then. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not going to change it up. <laughs> no, I'm good with it. We'll, okay. You know, hey, I'm neither so here nor there, and therefore I'm I'm good with it. Okay. Jared, what's your opinion? Yeah. I mean, I always skip over it. I don't. For a piece of toast, I could, I could eat it. Right. But on a sandwich, no, I'm not doing it. Plus, okay. it's smaller. I don't. I don't want. Sure yeah, I don't want like the end and then a middle piece for a, for a sandwich. So I don't know where I fall. I'm gonna say not go with it because I don't hardly ever use it. So I just skip over it and and never use it for anything and throw it away. Okay. Well. Um, I absolutely hate the end of the of a loaf of bread, Fair. so I am not good with it. <laughs> you set me up. You set me up. I was trying to help you out, and you set me up. I was trying to be nice to you, not uh, dude. I absolutely I... hate the end of a piece hey, of look, bread. Look, guys, Mitch is, is laying on the floor. The world. We just kick him. <laughs> he's on the floor over there. Let's just kick him all these mics. Yeah, listen, Captain Crunch. Crunch. I could pay. <laughs> I could pay three dollars for another loaf of bread. I will not eat the end of a loaf of bread. You know what the end of the loaf of bread's good for? It's like the callus is on your hand. It's good for when you're going brim fishing and you need some bait. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need. <laughs> whenever you whenever you spill something on the counter, you take that loaf of bread and you clean it up when you don't have any paper towels. When you want to give your dog a quick snack, you give him the butt of the bread. <laughs> That's exactly right. Even though I don't think the, bread is good for dogs. No, it's not. Don't give your dog bread. Well, I do. So. The meme of the guy saying they had us in the first half, not going to lie. Yeah, you had me, buddy. <laughs> you set me up. I, <laughs> but you did You did defend your stance, though. You, you, what I, you said honestly, was... Honestly, now that all y'all are not good with it, I don't want to be good with it either. <laughs> no, no, Because no. when's the last time no, I ate it? When's Mitch, it? I know you slather on a pile of mustard on that bad boy. Oh, yeah. A little bit of deli turkey. Not anymore. <laughs> I don't eat bread anymore, Cole. Good for you. So, but, actually, I guess you would not be good with it. I, well, technically, I would. you could put an asterisk in a... Yeah, it's true. Applic- not applicable. Mm. Which I don't know what's better. Not applicable or... Good I always thought that meant not available. 
No, I guess it could be not available. It could. I mean, it could. Mm, interesting. Learn something new every day. Hey, universal. y'all want to know a little life hack, though? Seriously? About a loaf of bread? Go ahead. Put it in the microwave. Leave it in the microwave. Mm. Don't run the microwave with it in there. Of course. But leave it in the microwave. We keep our bread in the microwave now, and it'll last over a month, a loaf of bread. Interesting. Without going moldy. Here's a fun fact. What did they... Well, not a fun fact. Here's a question since we're on the topic of bread. Before sliced bread, what was the best thing? (laughs) (laughs) Was it a loaf of bread? I guess. Like when they came up... When they said sliced bread, when they made sliced bread, did they just start saying, this is the best thing ever? Yeah, I don't know what what would have uh, (laughs) preceded it. Yeah, what did they say before that? This what was the, the best, best thing? thing the best. This is the best thing since shoes. <laughs> this is this is the best thing since that loaf of bread. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Anyways, oh. are you good with it? Do you like the end of the piece of bread? Because I don't. Uh, and apparently, Mitch does. I, you would. <laughs> right I bet you go to right Jersey. I bet when you go to Jersey Mike's, you say, <laughs> "I want the butt piece instead." <laughs> All right, it's fine, guys. Mitch catching uh, strays on his birthday. Yeah, the, yeah, the day after his birthday, too. Uh, that's why you do CrossFit, so you're strong enough. That's right. That's what it is. You can work on the shoulder muscles. It is what it is. You can write your own narratives about Mitch fine. <laughs> okay. Well, y'all let us know. Are you good with it or not good with it? The end of a loaf of bread is underrated. Good with it or not? Let us know. We're going to be right back. We're going to talk about the book. Talking about our satisfaction in the Lord. So stick around and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Good With It podcast for our final segment. And if you are watching on YouTube, Mr. Bishop is not here. I got so mad I threw him out of the window and uh, he's no longer with us. I'm just kidding. He had to run and that is okay. But um, today, we are talking about chapter two of the Men of the Word book. And as you can see, I ordered the book. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking at Cole. <laughs> Cole, ordered, Cole ordered it too. It's just not here yet, for those wondering. So chapter two is about finding satisfaction in God. And the chapter was real men find their satisfaction in God. Um, I think it was a really good chapter. Yeah. And it was a very well wit- well written well written chapter in that how he talked about the life of Solomon and that was who we were studying and how Solomon I think he did seven examples yeah of what Solomon was trying to find satisfaction in and then ultimately we know those things Solomon was trying to find satisfaction in didn't amount to the satisfaction that he truly needed to find in God um and that was kind of the gist of the chapter but Jared what yeah and how I think and how we still search those same things absolutely today to find satisfaction in. Yeah. No, it was, it was really good. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, one of the one of the things I kept thinking is like, I, and he made mention of this, is like Solomon is the wisest man in the world um, and to ever live, and yet he still tried to search somewhere for something else to satisfy him. Um, but no, it was, it was good. I mean, another kind of like last week, I think, you know, something that if you've been following Jesus for really any amount of time, you you probably know these things and you see yourself doing them. Um, but just another good reminder of um, how we find life and, and joy. Um, there's two of the big things that he talks about. So, um, yeah, good. So, you know, Solomon's a great great example of that in the scripture um, of someone who has by worldly definition has all has it all and has everything at his fingertips um, and yet in Ecclesiastes he says over and over as he searches those things that it all is just meaningless um, if you do not fear the Lord um, and if you do not find your joy life and satisfaction in him so um, it's great. Good reminder. Yep, absolutely. I think to uh, most of the things that, well, not most of the things, everything outside of God that we try to find our satisfaction is they all have a common, uh, I don't know what the word, they all have something in common and that's that they're finite and that they end in some way, shape or form. Um, you're never going to have enough power like he was talking about. 
You're never going to be able to climb the business ladder to the very top to fully satisfy yourself. The only true thing that we can have satisfaction is, is something that's infinite and that's in God. Um, and we were made that way. And that's what I hate about our sinful nature so much is we look at that and say, yeah, that's what we need. And we know that's what we need as a Christian, but oftentimes we just totally turn against that. Mm -hmm. And like you said, this is just a really good reminder. A lot of when I was reading, I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. Nothing was really like super challenging or anything like that. But like you said, very good reminder of what our satisfaction needs to be in and ultimately it needs to be in God and God alone. So I think the other <clears throat> key thing to being satisfied in the Lord is finding people yeah. who are satisfied in the Lord because there's so many people in this world who see what other folks have or they want, they get, then they're not satisfied with that. So then what do they do? They, they, they want a, more money. They want a bigger house. They, they find new friends because that friend let them down. Well, if you surround yourself with men who find that their satisfaction is in the Lord and they continue to show that and embodiment that, then I think that's contagious. And then you're, you're going to want the same things. And that's what's so great, I think, about three of you is your desire, first and foremost, is to love the Lord, to be satisfied in the Lord. And that love for Him pours out into your family, pours out into your careers, it pours out into your friendships. And that's what it's all about. There's so much a great embodiment to that, of to them being satisfied in the Lord. Yeah, and I think when I th think about like even why we started good with it, um, a couple of things like kept popping in my mind was that I, I think in order to find satisfaction in the Lord, you also have to find delight in the Lord. Um, and so I think a lot of times, you know, you you kind of come across those believers who have like gotten in this mode where you know, following Jesus is just like a bunch of rules and regulations and you just kind of drudge your way through it. And, um, and although that some of those truths are there, um, that God does call us to hard things and to hard commands and things that aren't always easy and lighthearted, um, there is a, a delight that we have in the Lord. Um, there's a, there's a joy that comes from, knowing that our creator is in control and that he wants what's best for us and he's constantly leading us to him. Um, and so, you know, part of why we started good with it is to, to show our delight in the Lord. And, um, and I think the second part of that is, is that a lot of the things that we end up finding our, you know, soul happiness and satisfaction in aren't always bad things. And so our desire kind of through good with it is to show that we can use these things that God has given us and that he's created and that he's placed out there for our joy, but they're not the source of our joy. Um, ultimately, the, the, those things um, and these things should lead us back into glorifying God so that when, we, when we're sitting in the pond early in the morning and the sun's rising and ducks are flying, there, there's moments in that in that moment that I'm like, man, God is, God is so awesome. Like he's so, he's so great that he thought of a sunrise and that he could create the, the sky to just burst in color the way that it does, that he could create the beautiful wood duck, um, that, you know, he created the landscape that we're sitting in. There's literal moments that I sit in and I'm enjoying God's creation um, that I am glorifying God. And so I think it's important for us to realize that a lot of the things that we find satisfaction in aren't necessarily bad things. A lot of times they're good things. We just need to use them the way that God has created them. And that is ultimately to bring us joy, to bring us happiness, but ultimately for our hearts to then reflect back to the Lord and to delight in Him and find our satisfaction in Him. Absolutely. Yeah, when you were saying that, it made me think of this the second to last paragraph. It says, To be sure, God's creation is full of wonderful things that we can enjoy, from delicious food to breathtaking scenery to intimate friendships. The problem comes when we look to those earthly delights as the source of our happiness, rather than seeing them for what they truly are, marks on a compass that point to God. Only He can provide the lasting satisfaction we all desire. Thus, the joys of this life and truly meaningful are truly meaningful only when God is at the center of our affections. Yep. So... Spot on. Yeah, I think that was good. Um, it was a good reminder. So, y'all have anything else? Good. Be sure to. Go ahead.
Be sure to check us out on YouTube. Um, go watch me and Cole. Well, Cole do half of it, but go watch me do the full marathon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're not um, wrong. Yeah. Uh, shoot us an email if you have any questions. Good with the pod at Gmail. Follow us on the socials. Um, about to hop on over to the Patreon okay. segment. So if you're a Patreon, stick around. Um, we'll add that into yours, and we're going to discuss the topic of worship, actually. So it kind of goes a little bit hand-in-hand hand with what we're talking about. Um, so, yeah, and if you want to partake in that, become a Patreon. So go to our Patreon. There should be um, a link in the show notes, probably no matter where you're watching this, and you can go and become a Patreon for as little as $5 a month. What a, what a deal. What a deal. What a deal. What a deal. Hey, if you become a patron, I might I might throw in a little uh, cake better cake ice cream. Better ice cream wow. Deal. wow. I would pay $5, would pay a, month $5 for, a month for cake batter ice for cream. a couple cake batter ice creams. We'll see. Stay tuned. I like it. All right. Well, I'll pray, uh, and then we will head over to Patreon. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Uh, we just thank you for these gifts that you've given us, for the life that you've given us. I pray that we can leverage it for the glorification of you. We thank you for this book. Um, thank you for the discussion that we've had here. And we pray for anyone out here who's listening, who's unsure of what they believe in or if, if they're following you, God. And if that's the case, I pray they find someone. I pray they ask questions. I pray they get pointed in the right directions. Again, we just praise you for all that you've given us and pray we can glorify you in all things. Amen. Amen.